TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy, February 2024 edition, with your hosts, Pablo Gunner and The Ambassador. And we are here to talk nerdy to you. about the nerdy stuff that we got into for February, which is the stuff that came out for February. So it's not like just random stuff. It's the stuff that came out in February, which is going to be Avatar, The Last Airbender, live action, mind you, okay? Yeah. We're gonna go into Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I've already covered it, so now I wanna hear what the ambassador has to say about it. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about Halo Season 2 because we're about the halfway point, right? Yeah, we're about halfway through. And then we're going to cover the PlayStation State of Play. And we'll do some shout-outs, talk about our merch a little, and then just whatever random nerdy stuff comes up along the way. So let's jump into Avatar ASAP. Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about Avatar. Uh, the, first two or the first two or three episodes were freaking amazing. Yeah, I feel like it took me a little bit to get into because they were done different, right? Like, it was done different. They did a lot of exposition in that first episode real quick, but it worked and made sense for what they were doing. And it They did things a little bit more chronological. Instead of just having flashbacks to what happened beforehand, just did it so they didn't have to keep having flashbacks. Right. And now, I don't know about you, but I was watching this with the kids. I was watching the animated version with the kids. I didn't get through the whole thing with the kids, but I definitely got everything that they covered. How many episodes was it? Eight. Eight. So it's eight episodes, about an hour, right? Yeah. On Netflix? About three episodes of the cartoon for one episode. Okay. So 24 episodes versus 26. So there's enough room to cover it all if they really wanted to. Yeah, they summed it up. It, it reminded me not a lot or too much of One Piece, but I was like, okay, they're kind of doing the One Piece thing with this season. And uh, like you said, the, the, first, the first few episodes were really solid. Yeah, and honestly, I felt like they spent too much time in Omashu. The, there were some good moments for it, but it just felt like they were just kind of dragging their heels a little bit there. Uh, with the, you had the, well, because they, like I said, they, they did mash up a lot of stories. Yeah. That's what, they mashed up a lot of stories into that one, which is like the mole badger getting lost in the cave story. There was the whole uh, boomy, and, and there was, they had the cabbages. <gasps> They also did Jet and his Freedom yeah. Fighters, and then they also did the uh, the, the disabled kid and the mechanic kid, the yeah. dad, who's uh, making stuff for the Fire Nation. Yeah. yeah, they packed a lot in there. And then Boomy, the Boomy thing, I felt like was such a great touch because he said, "You were gone for a hundred years, and." You were just frozen in time. We had to live those hundred years. I had to decide, do I give food to my soldiers or I do I give food to the starving children? He's like, I have to make those decisions on a consistent basis. You didn't. You're still a kid. You still have the joy. And now you're just getting back to it. And, and you need to learn how to make those choices. Right. There was a lot of that, which is like, sorry, kid, but you got to grow up quick. Yeah, I understand why they did so much there, but at the same time, I felt like some parts needed more attention that weren't given the proper attention. The Spirit Forest, I thought, was a pretty good pace, and it was cool to kind of introduce Roku early on. But I felt like the Northern uh, Water Tribe should have been more to it. I think what really weakened it quite a bit. Same mistake they made in the movie we don't talk about. If you have... Ang there. Have them, especially if they're going to go the route they went, have them at least do some water bending before getting there. And it just, the movie, of course, the movie made, the M. Night Shyamalan made less sense because they 
showed up not being good at waterbender, which isn't a fact. He picks it up pretty easily, waterbending. That's probably the easiest of them, with probably the next easiest one for him, firebending. He just had to realize what the purpose of firebending was. Yeah, that, that one was pretty hard for him. Like, he, he, he got burned and burned some people a few times. But, yeah, no, I completely yeah. agree, because I was thinking that the whole time, which is, why isn't she teaching him any of that that which she is learning the entire time? And I feel like they did that in the cartoon, but they didn't do that in the movie. And I was like, why? We already saw it fail once, so why are you going to do it again? Yeah. Because the M. Night Shyamalan movie made that same mistake, and it wasn't good. Right, and then when he does water bend, you know, even though he's in the Avatar state, you're like, but he hasn't done anything really at this point. The other thing that kind of irritates me with this is, I don't think he's going to be a good waterbender after the end of this season, because... I felt like they needed to do more time with Katara and the Northern Water Tribe. It almost turned into like a Rey moment where it's like, oh, she's the master. It's like, that's not how it works. She did work hard at it, but you don't just work that hard and just become a master. Right. Especially of one of the most complex bendings there is because uh besides earth bending like water bending has the most sub genres of bending in it the only ones of course we see are the fighting and the healing but there's also blood bending as right, well which we haven't seen yet which we haven't seen uh, yet but what even ice though right like there's ice. the ice there's the just turning it into ice and using it that way and stuff which, but yeah, I, I, the uh, the one thing I did like that they did in this was was when they showed her like taking the earth bending style and adapting it with water bending. That's really cool. But there was one whole problem with the whole thing. We don't actually see her seeing that method done. We see it getting done when we're watching the show, but it's never with Katara. We really see it more with Aang or Zuku. We needed to see that with Katara because it just doesn't really add up very well if she's doing something that we haven't seen her see. I just felt like the show was strongest, like the visuals were mind-blowing, right? They were like, really good. The way that they made the elements look and everything like that, it made sense. Like, in the cartoon, earthbending doesn't really make sense. They made it make sense in this, which is the whole mass and matter thing, right? Like, yeah. you're taking Earth out of something. There's going to be a missing chunk of Earth there. It's not just going to be still flat ground, right? And so, in the cartoon, there was, it was, the Earth was always just normal wherever they took Earth from. And yet, and then, like, even Omashu, it was a tower and it, that was hollow on the inside, right? Like, when it was falling, you're like, oh, that makes sense. That's why it looks the way it looks on the out. Okay, that... And, and the, even when they would do earthbending, there'd be a chunk of road missing or whatever. I love the part where there was that earthbender and he was talking to Uncle Iroh and he was like, he was talking about how his brother was just burnt to a crisp. Dude, that made me tear up so much. So much, so much of this show made me tear up because you're seeing kids or at least young, very young adults going to war but that's what we do in real life, right? Like, the people who we recruit into our militaries, these are people that are 17, 18, 19. They're in their young adult stage. They look, they're they still kids. I was in the Navy. I was not mature enough to be in the Navy. If I was to be in the Navy with the maturity that I have now, I would kick butt in the military because I'm just so focused. But these are kids that are trying to preserve their future and everything like that. So I can understand, like, the freedom fighters. Like, it's reality, though, because you see it all over the world. And it's sad and it's scary and it's terrifying. And you also go just see the way that things are in our own country. It hits me so hard. Like I said, there are so many parts in this that made it real. Because when it's cartoons, it's cartoons and it's different, right? And it's not real. But then when you use real actors and everything like that, you make it real. One of the weakness I, I will say is I have heard like the some of the acting's not that great. I think maybe that was one of the weaknesses of Katara. Maybe there was more yeah. that they filmed with her. And because she's not that strong of an actor yet, or at least early on in the show, that that's why they cut those parts out, I'm assuming, right? But the other big thing they did that drove me crazy was that whole ending sequence where they have him get taken 
him submit himself to the ocean spirit. The original concept was good, was really good in its own. And if they would have done the water bending throughout it, even if they wanted to modify it and maybe have him and Katara, because they've been training together, pull off the massive feet together, that would have been cool. Instead of just the whole ocean spirit thing. Got boring to watch. Right. Because it's so much CGI without like really any type of involvement or effort since it's just the spirit. Right, no build up to it and stuff yeah. like that. And there wasn't and like like you said, he didn't have the training, anything. And then their failure to set up Iro well in that sequence wasn't very good too. Because you have Zhao saying, Okay, I want you here because you're an expert on spiritual things yet we never see him do anything there that would tell us okay he's familiar with this and that's a problem if you're asking someone to be there for that it'd be like asking a lumberjack to show up but then every time you need a tree cut down he's gone right it's like well they they didn't do a good job of that in the show either which is they're like oh he's had these dealings and then they never explained it or showed it and i was like they they didn't do that well in the show either but that's what's that's the thing about retrospect, right? Is like, okay, let's improve. And there were things that were improved. I feel like for the most part, certain things, they were improved. They did make sense. Like I said, they did sum up a lot in a short amount of episodes. I feel like most of the acting was really top-notch. I feel like Azula was maybe one of my favorite things because she wasn't just this random evil child. She was this child that's being manipulated and toyed with and kind of driven to madness of like her dad's just she the, she the dad's pitting the kids against each other and i've heard people do that in real life and it's messed up to do that right yeah it's it's it's, it's maniacal you see why she goes down that path and and that's this made it make sense the other one was just like she's just a mean evil horrible girl which can you know be like all right there's people that are kind of like that in real life sure yeah uh, but this made it better, right? Like, this enriched it. Overall, I was really impressed. For like, I feel like most of the acting was pretty solid. I feel like there were some parts where you could tell the actors are not good enough that they were real tears, especially early on in the show. I, it's crazy, too, because the way that they film stuff, they film it out of order a lot of the time, so you don't... It's like they may, they may be here at... And that's really weird and confusing to me to be like, how do you get to that emotional point when you're not doing that? That's acting, right? Yeah. So, but the visuals were top notch. Uh, I feel like a lot of the a lot of the stuff was done pretty well for the most part. Uh, Abed was still Abed to me. I don't feel like he really knocked it out of the park as the mechanic. I liked yeah. Soka. I, I a lot of the characters I really enjoyed. Uh, for the most part, yeah, Katara, I feel like, was a little lackluster. I think maybe she's not a very experienced actress. I hope she gets better as it goes on so that we can see more of her because, like I said, I feel like they probably cut some of her stuff out or maybe a lot of her stuff out. I don't know. But yeah. overall, like, I'm down for more. I don't know about you. Yeah. I think it's... I don't know if it's a... I don't know if it's a must-see. For me, I loved it. So for me, it's a must-see, but... I feel like most people who are fans of the show, they're not going to think it's a must-see because it's not true enough to what they love. But I think it might have enough of what they love that it's definitely worth checking out. And so for most people that are just going in kind of blind, I think that it might be a must-see for them. Yeah, I, I think it's worth watching, but some of the liberties that were taken, I just feel like kind of took uh, moments away because, uh, like, especially, like, the end with the whole Northern Water Tribe, there was no reason to take Aang's moment away from him. He, he need, I mean, it's good to have those moments there for the main character. And then Katara has her moment, but it doesn't feel as justified because they, they're just like, you're a master. Well, I don't, I don't recall them just saying that she is a master. The Avatar still has to learn waterbending. In that case, he couldn't have asked for a better master. Uh, but I do know one of the kids are like, oh, they called her that. And I was like... No, the, the teacher. The teacher actually called, called her Called her a master. Well, I mean, like, they did in the show. 
But they didn't show but her in the show. She also, she also was teaching Aang, the but then mm-hmm. got there. She actually took, did the healing like they did, and then moved into that class. Right. And was actually participate. Like the fact that she never really participated in the class. Well, she did it, and I, I think she learned right away naturally. And then she was like, I figured it out, whatever. And it was it was quick. It was quick. Like, it would have been better to have her in the class for a little bit. Because just calling someone a master that quickly. But that's that's the difference between show and movie. And, I mean, I know it's a show, but it felt like a long movie, right? Like, it's it's a movie broken into eight parts, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, I think, I think their main issue is they didn't spend enough time to be able to develop the characters in that area and then of course and then they removed Iroh's moment there too at the Northern Water Tribe where he just genuinely like in the cartoon it was a little bit better because even the last Airbender movie we don't talk about did that seem pretty good that was one of the few scenes that's worth watching there where Iroh's basically steps up and you actually see he does have he is familiar with things spiritually, where he's like, okay, Moon Spirit gave you part of their essence so that you could give it back if it needed to. It's the, because it was weird having her just kind of do it on her own, just out of blue. It it made more sense when Iroh was there to be able to suggest it, and said they kind of just got him out of that area and then have her figure it out herself. Right, right. So, but what grade would you overall give it? I It's a solid watch, but I wouldn't call it a must-watch. Okay. All right, cool. Let's move into Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Amazon Prime. What was that, like 10 episodes? I want to say it was 10 episodes. Or was it 8? Yeah, so it, it's uh, Donald Glover, Maya Erskine. I had to look up Maya Erskine because I was like, what is she from? She's from that show Pen15 where she plays like a young... Like her high school t- teenage girl and her and her best friend are like goofs and idiots. Like based off that, I was like, I don't know if she can pull this off. Of the two actors, I feel like she pulled it off better than Donald Glover. Like the whole spy stuff. Donald Gov- Glover had stuff working against him. Cause, uh, Brad Pitt? <laughs> to live up to Brad Pitt? <laughs> no, not even that. <laughs> What's the difference between them and Brad Pitt? Brad Pitt's subject? Well, Brad Pitt, what what did he have to focus on in that show? I I don't... He he had to focus on his acting. Yeah. Donald Glover was involved in multiple assets of the show. Right, he was writer, director, producer. So when you have more power, actor, it's harder to hold yourself accountable even for a director because a director is going to be more lenient to someone who can fire them right and so it puts this imbalance there sometimes it gets in the way sometimes it doesn't right that's a possibility that could have happened with this show is the fact that they were afraid to criticize them or there wasn't enough people to really objectively go hey maybe you need to deliver it this way yeah well I, and with i think her all that's there mm. because she's only thing she does is just star in the show. Right. So the feedback is going to be better for her, for her takes. Which is crazy because she's also a writer, right? Like she was a co-creator in that Pen15 show. And I mind you, it's a comedy, but still, like he mainly kind of does comedy too. I think just because he's writing off the shoulders of uh atlanta that was like so popular and and well received that they're going like oh he can do it it's fine you know yeah not that he was bad i'm not saying he was bad i just felt like he didn't really feel it is his performance felt more comedic most of the time than serious and i felt like she was more serious and yet the tone of the show was more serious and i'm not necessarily saying that his comedy made it bad but it just wasn't like sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't, right? Yeah. And it was weird doing the whole Mr. and Mrs. Smith thing because like up until like the last episode or the episode before that, it wasn't really similar to the movie at all. It 
felt like it was more of its own thing than and plus like the movie was like very different in concept right because it was the fact they were both spies and didn't know each other were spies until they got the mission to try to kill each other well this one they're actually a team working together and then assume that you could just i'm assume when they thought donald glover's character was being john was being being weaker that they just uh wanted her to kill him off right but they when they were asking oh do you want another partner if he's holding you back trevor you are the weakest link goodbye yeah i mean because the show yeah it's like you said it, it is the concept of instead of two spies that are working for opposite agencies find that are married find out that they're that they're both spies and then they have to kill each other this is kind of the opposite which is they are partnered together as spies to do missions together and so they're partners and then to keep this facade of being married up i kind of wish there would have been at least a cameo by brad or angelina or both they didn't have to be there at the same time you know it would have been cool just to have that because they had that other couple that were like oh they're the couple that takes out other couples and stuff and to me like it didn't even there are certain missions where i'm like this doesn't seem like a spy mission this just seems like an action movie yeah. right it didn't seem like spy stuff and and that's why for me i was like this isn't really spy versus spy and it's definitely not spies versus spies either even though they were doing some spy stuff like the one that probably felt the most spy related to me was the ron perlman one and that yeah. one felt the most spy related to me and i liked that episode a lot but like i said most of most of it was not that and i i liked the therapist one but after a while it got old because they just yeah. kept on redoing the same thing but not like overdoing it or outdoing it you know what i mean like if you're gonna do it like once okay do it again. like you gotta keep on outdoing it and it, it wasn't really doing that it didn't that like i liked it at first but then it got old yeah and then that kind of went nowhere too yeah they hinted at that being like something that could screw them screw them in the future but then it didn't right like they burned the lady's house down or whatever yeah. which you don't even see it burned down it just they they caught it on fire and i was yeah. like they should have to take her out right like that's a whole messed up thing like now you got to take out your therapist or like whatever like i thought i thought they were going to leave a bomb and then it was going to blow up yeah right like that's what i thought and so it was a smaller version of what i thought it was and i was like okay well i guess we're not doing that again you know what i mean like at least and it was just that was watered down uh i did like the finale i thought it was really really good I liked it a lot, the whole truth serum thing, like that was a great touch. Yeah. Now, Usman is a master at extracting information from the unwilling through psychoactive means. Oh, is that truth serum? There's no such thing as truth serum. That's just nonsense from TV. Well, what is it then? It's a little concoction that he's been perfecting since his days with the SIS. It makes you suggestible and highly responsive. Well, dude, that's true serum. No, it's not. Like that back and forth was really good that they have. I really want to watch this with my wife because I think we will enjoy it together. Did you watch it with, with your wife? No, I, I just watched it on my own. Okay. Uh, what about you? What do you think about that? I thought it was a solid series altogether. I do like how the ending just doesn't really tell you exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. It just says... Shit went down. Yeah. <laughs> right, so they could continue it with the same couple. They could continue it with the older couple. Well, probably not. But Or they could com continue it with a different couple. They could kind of like Doctor Who it, right? Which is like, hey, let's have, do have different actors each season, you know? They could do that type of thing. So we'll see. I don't know. Well, I don't know. I haven't heard a lot of it or enough of it for it to be like, oh, yeah, we got picked up for a second season. I haven't heard that. But it's early uh, I liked it a lot. I ended up liking it a lot, despite it. I'm not it definitely at its faults, as we've said, but I really enjoyed it myself, and I'm willing to rewatch it with my wife. I can't say like it's a strong must see, but it is most definitely worth checking it out. Like because it's not, it didn't deliver on what I thought it would deliver, which is spies, right? It's, yeah. There's a few episodes that feel really spy worthy, but for the most part, it's more action. 
so yeah, I just feel like if it was improved and tweaked, it could be its full potential. I, I'd be down for a second season and any of its uh, different possibilities. Yeah, it's definitely worth watching, and if you're hearing this Amazon, if you're going to approve a Rings of Power for a second season, you might as well just approve everything. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to see a second season of Rings of Power, okay? Oh, where, where <laughs> not Gandalf ends up being... Where you saw not okay, Gandalf yeah, ends up being Gandalf. I'm not going to say that's that's that wasn't dumb, but the reveal of What's-His-Name was really cool, and I'm interested to see, like, how oh, all you mean the bad Sauron? stuff. I want to see all Sauron? the bad stuff happen. So, well, anyways. When you go after a well-documented <laughs> era and just do... Just do everything completely different because you don't have the rights to. It's like, why didn't you just do what you had the rights to? Yeah. Hopefully, we'll, we'll talk about that in the future, I hope. Yeah. Because I would love to do some Lord of the Rings merch, dude. I'm, I've got it loaded and ready. Anyways, speaking of loaded and ready, we're going to move on to Halo Season 2. Which, as we already mentioned, surprisingly got a Season 2. But at least the Season 2's better. Sort of. I... <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't know about you, but when I show up to watch Halo, I'm sh I'm showing up for Master Chief. I'm showing up for the Spartans. I want to see them do their thing. And when I see that, I love that stuff. When I'm not seeing that, I'm not loving it. And there's way too much of the not in the suit and not doing their thing in this show, which I, I understand building and all this stuff, but... There is just way too much junk in this show, and I don't know if it's because they don't have the budget to keep up the visuals for when they're in the suits and, and the fights and everything like that, or if it's just, or they're just padding it to try to get as much episodes as, and, and as much, you know, mileage as they can out of this thing, which is a huge mistake if that's what they're trying to do. Yeah. But if you don't have the budget, then don't do it. Don't do it if you can't do it right. Yeah. And, like, I felt like they're just trying to profit off of their one of their more successful games, Halo Reach. Mm -hmm. And so they keep, like, pushing towards it. And then there's other side stories going on, which I'm still trying to figure out, like, <sighs> what's the point of the side story? Because, like, the kid has still been, like, a useless side story so far. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, excuse me. Two seconds here. Um, I'm the one in the car, remember? This story's about me, not him. Okay, you got it? All right, we're gonna move ahead. Sorry to slow you down. <laughs> uh, the only thing that's benefit is having one of the parts in the side story show up. Yeah, in like the I, main. I did like that Spartan coming back and rejoining the Spartans. Like, that was cool. Yeah. But, like,. The lead up to that, you just wasted so much. Like I just felt like the, you wasted so much of the first season. Like you probably could just jump into the second season and be like, okay, that's still a cool lead up, but you could have just, you know, lumped it together. I, it's it's just way too much junk and not enough what we want to see. And like I said, if it's a money problem, then don't do it right if you can't do it right. Yeah. And I'm not saying like the. Yeah, the writing is kind of can be bad and kind of awful at times because yeah, it's all over the place and you're like, or, why? What? What is the? I'm not even a hard. You have to understand, I'm not even a hardcore Halo guy. I I really love one Halo game that I haven't even beaten, which is Infinity, and that's about it. And I feel like I'm still offended enough to be like, I, I mean, I love seeing the dude like the dude. What's his name? Pablo, and I love that he's also another Pablo, and I think he's like. I'm assuming he's Hispanic and Jewish because I know he has like a Jewish last name and I go like, okay, this dude's awesome. I gotta support this brother, right? There's just too much out of the suit and you make stupid excuses why they're not in the suit. It's just, it's so dumb. And But I'm like, I love it when it shows the action and I love it. And But even when they show the action, like they're taking cover and I'm like, when do you take cover in Halo? <laughs> like, like, oh, because no, they're not in suits. Okay, whatever. Like, this is not Halo. This is not Halo. Why are you doing this to... If we like, wanted to watch people taking cover, we would have been tuning into a Gears of War show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which I'm, I way more want to see with uh, what's his name. Uh, like I think he definitely has the chops for it. But oh, um, John DiMaggio, the uh, Batista. Oh, 
Batista. Batista, yeah, like I would love to see Batista. Oh, I would just like to see John DiMaggio so, playing Marcus. But yeah, like I would way more wanna would like to see that. But yeah, because this is this is a this is a mess, man. I mean, I'm still gonna keep watching it, and we'll still cover the second half. I don't know. It just it feels like I'm glad I'm not a hardcore Halo person because I feel like I would hate this way more. But even as like a person who is interested in writing and and character development and character growth and just writing in general like this is a giant mess and it's not it's not what i want it's not like i i love it when it is the action and I, there are certain moments that are powerful and and good but but they they the the bad hugely outweighs the good yeah like the first season it seemed like they were trying to find the halo and the second season, oh, they're glassing planets now. Yeah. It makes absolutely no sense. See, because I don't know that. I, I didn't make that especially connection. Like, yeah. Especially with, like, Reach, because, like, Reach... It's like, why are they going to glass Reach? That has Forerunner uh, tech there. And Forerunner is the uh, ancestors of the Covenant, which they consider, like, pretty much a deity or gods that they worship. The people who built the Halo weapon. And so they're not going to glass a planet that has that in it. But the whole invasion, like the invasion of Reach was a mixed feeling. Like it had its moments where it was cool. But like you really had to like have them take the suits. It's like what are they going to do with the suits if they don't have Spartans to put in the suits? Right. But you're taking the suits. Okay. Yeah. It, it's so much of it doesn't make sense. And that's the biggest problem. It's like. You need to write, make it make sense. Make it, that's all, that's what you got to do with writing. Make it make sense. And they had that leader guy just kind of going all over the place, but not fleshing anything out of what he's doing. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all over the place. It's a mess. I, I, if you didn't drop off from the first season, yeah, there's improvements in the second season, but there are so few and far between that I'm, I'm really not sure it's, it's even worth it. So we'll see overall. But even right now, I'm going like, eh. I mean, I had to go. I don't even know I, if it's worth checking out. I really can't even say if it's worth checking. I don't feel like it's good to see. I don't feel comfortable telling people, hey, check it out. I don't. Yeah, I have to give it a pass. So we're going to move on to PlayStation State of Play, which we kind of have like a little, that's, we had the Xbox developers direct the previous month. Yeah. So this was an interesting contract because this was more focused, right? Like there wasn't the the developer interviews, which I kind of missed, but kind of didn't miss because it got to the point and just showed us what we wanted, but it also kind of missed heart at the same time. They showed uh, Helldivers 2, which is out. It's yeah. out. It's only available on PlayStation. PlayStation. I know it's on PlayStation. If you have PlayStation Plus, you got it. You can play it. And to me, it just looked like a Destiny ripoff, but I've heard it's a great game. I've heard so many good things from people that it is a blast playing and it is really, really good. Yeah, definitely check it out if you're you're a PlayStation person. Then we have Stellar Blade, which that was a gorgeous hack and slash game and that looked fantastic and that comes out April 26th. So keep your eyes out for that. Then we have Sonic X Shadow Generation generations and that comes out in autumn i'm that jacked looks pretty for that. cool that looks really good and that's i'm like that has to be a papa gunner review like i saw it and i was like i've been looking for more games to, to play with the kiddos i'm definitely I, I really hope we can get this if i'm gonna get it myself if we can't get it but yeah and, and i'll be covering it so for sure we're gonna get that it looks like a blast yeah it definitely looks like a fun game i like the other generations game so i can't wait to see how they do this one uh, then there was Zenless Zone Zero, which sounds like it's just a mech fighter type thing. I honestly don't remember. Then there's Foam Stars, and that comes out February 6th. That's also another one that's like it comes out just PlayStation on. And if you have PlayStation Plus, you got it. It seems similar to Splatoon, but not quite. Right. Yeah, It. I don't know. I haven't really heard much about it, which is not a good thing, but I haven't really heard bad about it either so yeah uh then there's dave the diver that comes out in april and that actually looks really cool it was like a kind of like a 3d 
or two is like a 2D, but it's a side scroll but kind of 3D. I don't know. They meshed it, and it looks really cool and really neat. That was like XC Exploration. That looks really cool. And then there's V Rising, which that reminded me of Gauntlet, but with like building elements. Loved Gauntlet back on, back in the day, which I want to say was Sega Genesis. Um, NES. That well, the original, right? Original was on NES, and then they've made. Some but like more the newer one, like Super I remember Nintendo playing Genesis, and then the their big one that people like Legacy was Nintendo sixty four on PlayStation. Okay, maybe th maybe that's the one I'm thinking of. But yeah, loved those, and this looks like totally. Some, and except this adds building elements, comes out in 2024, not specific, but still, that looks really cool. Looks like a blast. Then we have Silent Hill, the short message, which is free to play instantly, right away. I think it's a, is it a mobile game, or it's just a game that you can just download and play? Because I thought it was kind of like a mobile game. I even heard on other podcasts, like, yeah, it's just a teaser, like, it's, it's not, it's not really what people want, like, give... Quit wasting time on this stuff that's not what people want and focus on the things that people want, which is Silent Hill 2 Remake. Yeah. Like, that's what people want. That's what, that's what everybody wants. Like, you don't even have to be a person that knows Silent Hill 2 and you want the remake. Like, I never even played it and I'm like, yeah, I want it. Yeah, you know, like, I seen the movies and I like the movies and it's terrifying and everybody knows Silent Hill 2 is like the best one. So, like, yeah, let's focus on that and let's get it out. I don't remember that there being a date for that one either, as well as for Judas, which I don't remember what Judas was. And then there was Metro Awakening on PSVR 2. That comes out 2024. Then Legendary Tales Action RPG, which is also a PSVR 2. That comes out February 8th. And then there's Dragon's Dogma to March 22nd. And I was like, I've been researching Dragon's Dogma for a while because I didn't play the first one. I heard it's so great. And then this one comes out and I'm like, man, I have to play the first one before this one comes out. Which yeah. I probably won't be able to because they're too violent. They, have, they have the Netflix series too so, based off of it too. Oh, yeah. And they're, they're it's solid. Okay. I, I feel the writing could be better, but if you like the game, you'll like the... Netflix series. Okay, sweet. But that game looked phenomenal. I was like... Because at first, like, I didn't know what it was because I haven't played the first one. And I was like, this game looks so good. Like, it looks phenomenal. And then there was like, oh, it's Dragon's Dogma. And I was like, two. And I was like, okay, yeah. All right. I'm down. I'm down for it. I don't know if I'll be able to play it, but I'm down for it. Rise of the Ronin, March 22nd. And I'm like, is that a, a Ghost of Tsushima, like, follow-up? Or, like, a prequel? Or is this inspired by... I think it's inspired by So, because I don't think, it doesn't seem like it's the same team or anything like that, but if it's as good or nearly as good, I'm down for it, and that comes out March 22nd. Then there's Until Dawn, which I think they're making a movie of it, like an actual movie of it, and that's what the main focus on that was. And then Death Stranding 2, 2020, 25, which that looks good. Like, yeah, it, that it looks does really look good. good. It looks great. I mean... That guy kills it. I didn't play the first one, but I heard it was really long. And I was like, oh, I don't have time for that. Of course, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. There was yeah. that, which looks beautiful and gorgeous. And I just want to I just wanna be all up inside it. And I, I, Because I, I played the, the remake of the first part, and I was like, I loved it so much. And I, I just want to be back in that world. I don't know if I'll be able to get to play it, because once again, it might be too violent. But if you can, then definitely do it, because it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Right? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be really good. Then, I want to talk about our merch. <gasps> My cabbages! You're going to pay for this! Two cabbages, please. Which is Avatar-focused. I have the Airbender one because I've always feel like I have connected with Airbenders. I've been told that, like, oh, hey, you're a cool, chill, mellow, go-with-the-flow kind of dude, which is also kind of water, but not exactly. So, and I'd totally rock some head tattoos and just like live in a temple, you know, and ride mm -hmm. a, uh, a bison. But yeah, so I love this. Uh, it's actually Slay J designed this. Superb. And there's different versions. There's, you can do white lettering or black lettering. This is the tank top version. And we have all kinds of different versions. There's ones with, with like the, all the symbols on the sleeve. There's so, it's, there's top notch stuff and it's so great. And I was, I'm so impressed with the designs that, Slay J came up with it. He really killed it. 
And uh, so definitely check it out because it's on sale now for this month, which we don't have much for, for the month of February. So I don't know if we should keep it going. I feel I, like well, maybe we should keep it going. I think we should extend it to the you next know? month. The because it's, it's such a big deal. Like, it's so good. I need More people need to see this show. Yeah. And, and even if you're not into the live action, you should still get it. Because pick whichever one, because I know everybody has their different versions of which they are, like yours. But yeah, Fire Nation. How can you go wrong with Fire Nation? The Breath of Life. <laughs> you can't argue with The Breath of Life. Because that's, uh, if you watch the cartoon, when they go find the origins of firebending, because the Fire Nation has corrupted their way of doing firebending so they don't actually use the true uh, origin of it they use anger mm -hmm. and while well, they're very angry people so it's effective <laughs> but Iroh doesn't use anger he uses the real purpose of it and that's why he's so powerful oh he's so great I love oh, I loved his parts in the show like when he used yeah. his his fire bending, I was like, oh my god. Or, this or is the awesome. fact he developed like the whole blue lightning defect deflection thing. He's like, oh, yeah, I learned this. I've seen waterbenders do this similarly, but I applied it to fire bending. You just go like this and then you just let it flow through and go out. Yeah. Yeah, crazy, dude. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, my wife is definitely a firebender. I feel like I need to get her a firebender shirt because she is fire and fury and she definitely uses. For fire, for not always, not always for, for anger and hate. But I feel like uh, maybe in aggression. But most of the time, sometimes it's for love, you know, of the, of the children and the things she cares about. But yeah, and then I know that Slay J got, did he get Earth or no? He got water because he's like, he's all about the the blood bending. He's 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 like, yeah, I'm a blood bender. Like that's what he is. Maybe it should be like tainted with some red or something, you know. Uh, yeah. but yeah, I so. mean, you know, subgenres, the blood bending's cool, but I mean, what about lava bending? Yeah, and, lava, uh, lava metal bending, bending is <laughs> sick. Yeah, metal is, is, is metal. Yeah, it's, it's hardcore for sure. I, I do, I love the ice, like, that's so cool, like, the ice, because I'm like, especially, like, they use, like, and they can just freeze people in place and stuff, and, like, she uses, like, ice blades, Oh my gosh, Katara does. Like, there's so much stuff that's just, like, so cool about uh, waterbending. And then, but I kind of feel like, I, I've told my wife, though, like, I do, maybe she is more Earth. But I don't, because Earth is really cool, too. And like I said, Earth was done so much better, I feel like, in the this live-action show than even, I think, the the animated because they made it make sense. They, they improved it. They made it better. We'll, we'll see. Depends on how so, tough is. Yeah, we will see. We will see Toph. Because some of the characters, I'm like, I would not have gone with that person as, like, that person. But whatever. Like, some of them are better and some of them are not. Like, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, Zuko makes feelings. So, I, I like Zuko. He's pretty good. But, yeah, Sokka's, like, perfect. Um, yeah. I feel like a lot of them are, like, Aang, perfect. Iroh, perfect. Like, there's some where just, like, could not be more perfect. You're, like, crazy. So, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so that's, so make sure you check it out because it's on sale with free shipping. The, our merch of the month is, and anything that says talk nerdedly on it, that stuff is the cheapest. That stuff's usually like 15 bucks and full price is like 30 bucks. But yeah, we have, we have really great sales, uh, for our merch of the month stuff. So definitely check all that stuff out because we have Halo stuff on there as well for this month. Pretty much anything that you could check out this month that's related it's going to be on there. It's expect that. We're making merch for it. If it's nerdy, we're making merch for it. And that's what you have to expect for this month and for the February. And for any month, even for March, right? Because for March, we have so much stuff coming out for March. It is crazy. So I'm going to go over the nerdy stuff that's coming out in March. Movies, shows, games, anime. It's hard to keep up with because they release their stuff weird. They don't... I don't know. It's, it's really hard to find. So, but I have Dune on the first. That's part two in the theaters. We have Dragon Quest, The Adventure of Die, which has actually came out 2020, but it's on Netflix, new on Netflix. Same thing with Godzilla. It's a 2014 movie, but it's new on Netflix. So it's going to be good to get prepared for the stuff that's coming out. 
We have My Little Pony Tell Your Tale Season 2 on Netflix. Uh, we'll probably be checking that out with the girls. So maybe I'll do a review on that. On the 4th, we have Hot Wheels Let's Race Season 1 on Netflix. Maybe I'll check it out. I don't know. I'll give it at least a, a try. Then on the 5th, there's the Outlast Trials, which I think those are like the horror games that are really terrifying. Like they're supposed to be like the, some of the most terrifying horror games of all time. And they are out on PC, PS4, 5, Xbox, all the Xbox. Uh, then we have WWE 2K24, same, PC, all, all the stuff. Uh, obviously not on Nintendo. On the 6th, we have Extraordinary Season 2 on Hulu, which is like a powers-based type show, which is pretty sounds pretty interesting. On the 7th, we have Pokemon Horizons, the series, Season 1 on Netflix. That's brand new. As Dusk Falls, and that's on PS4 and 5. We On the 8th, we, there's Kung Fu Panda, which is in theaters. And then there's Unicorn Overlord on PC, PS4, 5, Xbox. And then on the 14th, Invincible Season 2 Part 2 on Amazon Prime Video. That's going to be awesome. On the 19th, Lightyear Frontier, PC, Xbox Series. I thought that would be like, maybe it's Buzz Lightyear. I don't think it actually is. And then we have, oh my god, I can't wait for this. On the 20th, X-Men 97 for Disney+. Plus. Uh, I can't wait. I, that is probably single-handedly like my most anticipated thing of anything to come out ever because it's like the continuation i really hope they go deep into the comics and continue like i hope they get like to even to the stuff that they've done with like kind of cyclops going the magneto way sort of like i don't i don't i don't think they'll do that anytime soon but we'll see if they eventually get there depending on the popularity of the show but i i can't wait just to see what they have to deliver i think it looks phenomenal so far then there's also alone in the dark pc ps5 xbox and then on the 21st I don't know if this is nerdy necessarily, but as an 80s kid, I love the original and I'm going to watch this one and I'm really watching it to kind of hate it, which is going to be on Amazon Prime. It's Roadhouse. It's Jake Gyllenhaal. I think he's a phenomenal actor. It looks interesting, but I really feel like why are you making movies that are like gold? Like make remake movies that are garbage and make them better. Like yeah. why do they keep doing this? But we'll see. We'll see how good it is. Next, on the 22nd, is Dragon's Dogma 2, as we mentioned, uh, PC, PS5, Xbox. And then there's Princess Peach Showtime on Nintendo. I might get this. I, I want to check it out because I have girls, and they might be really into it. Even my wife likes playing Nintendo stuff, we, so we might check it out. My family and I might check it out, so we'll see. It looks, it looks cute, it looks fun, which might be exactly what you want for girls, you know? Yeah. Or just mini games and stuff. So then there's Rise of Ronin, PS5. On the 26th, that is South Park Snow Day, which is a game on PC, PS5, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox. Then you have Prison Architect 2, PC, PlayStation 5, Xbox. Who's making these games? Prison Architect? Like, what? what is this? Like, why? Who's, who's coming up with these? Like, We're going to make Architect Prisons. Like, I guess if you're trying to make kids want to build, I don't know. Or like you work in the prison system, you're like, I could make a better, I don't know. Like, who is this for? I just don't know. I guess the same people that want to make Planet Zoo? I don't know, yeah. which also comes out on PS5 and Xbox the, the same day. Then on the 27th, there's Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning on Paramount+. Plus. On the 28th, there's Open Roads PC, PS4, 5, Nintendo Switch, Xbox. On the 29th, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire in theaters. I haven't even seen the trailer because I really don't want to spoil it for me, but I feel like I need to at least watch the first trailer to be like, what is this movie you gotta, about? The sneak, the teaser is what you watch because okay. anything past teasers are usually... It's too much. Too They're much. getting too ridiculous with these trailers. Like, I just want... I died. That's all I want is a teaser. Like, that's all I want. The, the previous movie was good enough to get me to want to go see it it wasn't the greatest, but it was not bad. It's not... You, you can't compete with the original. Yeah. It, it was one of those where uh, I would have just left it on its own. Yeah. No reason to remake something that's a masterpiece. So, and then there's Godzilla X-Kong, which is funny because it reminds me of, like, Sonic X Shadow, you know? It's like, they're not enemies in this. They're going to be working together, kind of, maybe? 
It's the New Empire, which to me is also hilarious because Frozen Empire and New Empire, like, really? Yeah. And it's the same It's the same day? It's the same weekend? Like, <laughs> you're going to be competing against each other with the same the, those titles? I would be surprised if people accidentally go see the wrong movies. You know, <laughs> like, just because of both having Empire both on the same day. They both start with G, even. You know, like, <laughs> they're like, yeah, get, I'll take the movie that starts with the G and has Empire in it. They're like, uh... <laughs> So yeah, okay. We well, yeah, <laughs> this one at seven o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> um, so and then there's Paw Patrol: The Mighty Movie on Paramount Plus, which I thought is already on there. I thought it was actually new. It's I think it's actually supposed to be new on Netflix. It's moving to Netflix. Uh, Shogun is going to be every Tuesday on Hulu, so that's going to be out. I definitely want to check that out if I can. And then Bad Batch is continuing. Uh, every Wednesday on Disney Plus, which I've already watched the first three episodes, love it. I'm like, this is what it's been building up to. You're giving me straight gold. I've loved it. I can't wait to do a video of it, focusing on those episodes. But it's I'm gonna say right now, definitely a must see for those first three episodes. If you're checking them out just by the clusters, because the, the the premieres three episodes right out right now. It's like I said, strong must see for me. And if you want to watch them by by episodes, and in putting out three, loved it. So, anyways, then Halo is coming out every Thursday for for March as well on Paramount Plus, which we are unfortunately going to watch for our fellow nerds, not for ourselves, because I would stop watching it if it was. Yeah. I would stop watching it personally. I'm doing it for you. Yeah, like <laughs> it reminds me of like. Trying to watch later seasons of Riverdale or The Flash. Yeah. Where you're just like, this is bad. Why am I watching this? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. So, but speaking of people, we're doing it for you. Do it. They're, they do stuff for us. We work together. Are the people that we have been uh, networking with. So I, I have to give a shout out with them. Always at the top of that list. Has to be Atticus because he's the king. You know, he's the, what is the Batman of... Um, like how? I, I want to say. I'm probably saying it wrong. Definitely check out his stuff on YouTube. That's his main focus. That's what he focuses on. He's very interactive. He's very raw. He re shows you what life is like in Vietnam, in a small town and everything. He he goes to big towns too. Like yeah. So you see it all and it's, it's real legit stuff. And there's also if you want to be an English teacher out there, he gives you yeah, some tips and, and stuff like that. One of his last videos was like, this is how I do laundry out here. Yeah. So, like, just simple stuff to, like, it's it's great stuff. I, I love his stuff. It's so good. Also, Networkers, or Berna Kenshin, she has great stuff on YouTube. Really, all of her content is, is gold. She does cosplay. She's hardcore Splatooner and anime uh, aficionado. I feel like I can say phenomenal stuff on there. Definitely check her out uh, the superpower list check them out across the board where it's Facebook Twitter wherever they're at check them out they're really cool I love the stuff that they post they're pretty hardcore deep into comics nerds for sure and then we have Riot TV's really cool check them out they're, they're one of ours uh, Randy uh, S0725 on on the tweets uh, they're really cool actually that's the same guy that does a superpower list so, yeah, that's theirs. Uh, Amerame Media, they're super cool. They're really awesome. Check all their stuff out, too. Uh, Web Imagine Service does music. The Film Rage guys are so good. If, you, if you're hardcore into movies, they cover every single movie out there. Like, they rage about it because they, they, they're doing it for the people because they watch all the bad, everything. They'll watch it. Whether it's good or bad, they watch it. They go through the pain like we're going through the pain of Halo. You know, they do it for the people. So, yeah. and it's funny stuff. They're funny and they're cool. The MK Jekyll and Hyde, they do like a web comic and stuff, but they have great content across the board on all their social media. So definitely check them out. And then Filmmakers Pod, Cinematic, Anarchy, Pesky Gremlins, uh, Gmart 8, Billy D's, Po Boy Pod, and Gone Cold Podcast. Those are also some other ones that are great to check out. So, yeah, check them out because they're awesome. And, uh, I think uh, I think that's it for this week or for this month actually for this yeah. month. So check out our stuff for for.
for March, our, our merch and all our content. Like I said, we're going to try to cover as much of the nerdy stuff as possible. So Yeah, and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos. Uh, they're worth watching and a blast. So stay nerdy, planet Earth. And talk nerdy to me.